Hi everyone, welcome to this new video about MLflow. In our recent series of videos, we have been using the MLflow uh, tracking server to lock metrics, parameters, artifacts, and models. Um, we have also explored the local server that MLflow offers to visualize all this data to a web interface. Mm, now let me place this scenario. Uh, let's say that you have conducted numerous experiments um, now you have a model that you consider is ready for use. Um, you might be wondering if there is a mechanism in MLflow that you can use to give this model the attention that it deserves. Well, in this video we are going to delve into precisely this scenario. We will discuss how to leverage the MLflow model registry to record all the versions of the models that you have been working on. So let me start by defining what is the MLflow model registry. The MLflow model registry component is a centralized model store, a set of APIs and also an UI that you can use to collaboratively manage the full life cycle of an MLflow model. Uh, it also offers model lineage, which means that and you can know which experiment and which run produced the model, model versioning, stage transition, for example, transitioning the model from staging to production, and model annotations, which means that you can uh, include additional metadata about the model. Now, let me show you how we have been working so far. Uh, this is the tracking server um, under which we can have multiple experiments, experiment one, experiment two, and under each experiment, we also have a multiple runs. And under each, uh, we are logging models, metrics, artifacts, and parameters. Now, let me show you how this looks like, including the model registry. Now, this is the MLflow model registry component. Um, here we can see the, a, a new component or new object called registered model. Um, a registered model is associated with a version number and a stage. So let me place um, this scenario again. You have been working, you are working in the tracking server, um, you are developing the code, you are doing some tuning, and let's say that you achieve a model with good performance metrics and you consider that the model is ready for use. Well, in that scenario, you probably want to move the model from the tracking server to the MLflow model registry. Um, to indicate that the model is ready for use. So in that case, we call this action registering the model because you are basically registering the model. Um, and this is more or less how this model registry works. Let me show you uh, with code how we can register our first model. So this is the code that I have prepared for this video. Uh, it's very simple. I have a custom model here. Um, meaning that I will have to use the Python flavor to, re to log this model. I am using this create MLflow experiment just to create an experiment. Uh, it's called model registry in this case. And here I am logging three models. And I'm going to show you the first, let's say, um, method that we have here in MLflow uh, to register a model. And that's basically providing this parameter, registered model name. In the During the last videos, we have been used this parameter before and this is because when you provide this parameter i mean the registered model name mflow automatically register this model in the model registry so here i have three uh, examples the first one is a python uh, function a python model um, the second is a singular model and also registering this model because i have provided the name um, the the last one is also a singular model, and in this case, I am not providing the registered model name, which means that MLflow will not register this model. So let's run this code and see what happens. Okay, it seems the, the, there are some issues with Git, but it doesn't matter. Okay, as you can see here, uh, the version one of a uh, custom model was created. The version one of random forest reg regressor was also created. Um, now let's see the MLflow UI and see how this looks like. 
Okay, let's go to experiments, model registry, and here we have uh, the experiment, right? In which we have three models. Um, we have the custom model, which, which we can see here the, uh, is a Python model. Then we have a random forest uh, one, and we can see here that this is a scikit-learn model, um, and, and the random forest two, right? Which is also a scikit-learn model. If we look at here, the flavor is scikit-learn. Now this is basically how we have been working so far. Now let's go to the model registry to see these models. Here, models, um, we can see two models, right? Custom model and random forest regressor, which corresponds to each one of the models that I have on my experiment, um, under my experiment. Now, as you can see here, I only have two models because I didn't um, register the last model. I mean, I didn't provide the name for the registered model. So if I click here, uh, we can see that the, this is the, per the first version, version one. Um, we can see here the source run. So this points to the experiment that produced this model. So as you can see here, when, when we click there, it goes to the experiment section and shows us the, the artifact that represents the model. So that was the first way. Um, let me go again to models. Um, we have the, the version. In this case, uh, um, both models are version 1, the first model, which makes, makes sense. Uh, we have a staging and production. Right now, uh, the stage of these models is known because we haven't assigned any, any stage for these models. Uh, what else can I show you? We have tags. We can include tags. Um, version 1. Okay, now let's create the version 2 of this model, Random Forest Regressor. Let's go to Experiments, Model Registry, Model Registry, and we can see here that there are three artifacts, right? Here, as you can see here, um, at the top right in this box, we can see that this model is registered uh, as Random Forest Regressor B1, and this model is also registered. But this model, is not right. So let's register this model using the interface. Uh, select the model, and I, I'm going to register under this model. So basically, what I'm going to do here is to create a new version of the model register. So this is the version two. Let's go again to models. Now we have random forest regressor, and this is the version two. If I click here, now we have two versions: version one and version two. Um, let's click on version 2, and if we go to source run, this is going to point to the last artifact here. So, that's very interesting. We can also transition um, the models using the interface. Uh, for example, I'm going to, let's say, transition this model, custom model, to a staging. I click here, and a stage, which is known right now, I can transition to a staging. Okay. And if we go again to the register model, to the main page, we can see that now the version 1 is in a staging. Um, in later videos, we are going to see how to transition the model from different, let's say, stages uh, using the API and the interface. So that was everything for this video. Um, thanks for watching it, and see you the next time.